Hey, Think Really, thanks so much for joining us today on the podcast. We're live on set uh, in Orlando, where our conference is, and I've got some great interviews today. Uh, as you know, I started Think Realty in 2013 as the founder, really to try to help real estate investors find great information and content. Uh, as a third generation real estate investor, I felt like so many people that I was talking about just didn't have access to good information. And so I brought a lot of my friends with me, resident experts, uh, people in the, in the field that uh, really can help uh, you grow. And that's what the podcast is all about. That's what the magazine is all about. That's what our conferences are all about. Before I jump into our guest today, I want to say a quick thank you to our podcast sponsor, which is CB3 Financial. When you're taking on a new real estate investment project, having a trusted lender is key. Count on CB3 for your fix and flip, rental, cash out, or rate and term refi needs. Visit cb3financial.com forward slash think realty, cb3financial.com forward slash think realty. Today, our guest, uh, usually uh, we have Meryl Chandler, uh, but today we have Jessica. And do I say the name, is it Tabora? Tabora, perfect. I said it right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> good, perfect. Um, if you guys have heard Meryl in the past, um, he's talked a lot about um, how to get uh, proper funding, get set up for proper funding. Um, you guys have a program called uh, Get Fundable. Yep. Um, and, uh, and what's the name of his book? It's a crazy name. It's called The New F Word. The New F Word, which yeah. is funding or fundable, yeah. which is very, very good. But um, so just to kind of jump in, um, what's happening in the current marketplace? Um, what I've noticed so much is that businesses, real estate investors, are really struggling more now than ever to get funding from banks. You know, yeah. why is that what's going on in the economy that's causing that? Well, anytime uh, there's an election, there's always some uncertainty in the market. We see it every four years, um, regardless of who's running. And so since we're in the run up to that over the last, I'd say the last four to six months, it's mm -hmm. really tightened up lending mm -hmm. has. Um, but then as soon as the election passes, it's kind of like a sigh, regardless of who wins. Right. Um, and so lending resumes. So we have been um, talking to lenders. We have a bunch of relationships with them and helping our clients navigate what those new lending underwriting guidelines look like mm -hmm. so that they can get approved because it's a little bit uh, harder right now. Yeah. I know that you know, as a business operator myself, um, it used to be so easy to just get lines of credit. All I had to do is show deposits and I you know, base my line of credit based yep. on the amount of deposits I had. And it's not that way anymore. Um, and what I love about the program that you guys have is that it really isn't based on your credit score. Mm -mm. Um, it's more the credit worthiness or how they perceive the credit worthiness of your business. Can you kind of walk us through the difference between personal credit versus you know business credit. Yeah, so all credit, personal and business, is based on borrower behaviors. Um, lenders do not have time to sit down and manually review every single application that comes through. Um, and so they're using a lot of AI right now. They're using um, automatic underwriting where they're just scanning and mm -hmm seeing how you show up as a business person. Um, so they're, as opposed to 100 years ago, they're not saying, oh, Eddie, we are going to lend to you because you own the corner store and we know that you always show up to work and you're the nicest person around. They're um, having to look at how your business is set up, how you have a relationship with the bank, how long you've had a relationship with them. Um, they're looking at all of the background things to see if you're somebody they want to risk their money lending to. And what are some of the things uh, as a business owner that I should be doing, right? Like and some of the things that you're helping your clients do? Um, the number one thing is making sure you have your entity um, set up correctly. So okay. you have all your T's crossed, I's dotted, um, so that you've got a fundable name, your purpose is very, very clearly written out, you have a location of business, you have a business phone number. Um, basically, putting trust in the lender saying, you can find me exactly here, you can contact me here, this is who the owner of the company is, this is um, how we do business so you can find us. It just gives the lenders a peace of mind. So it's basically like taking a, a business and giving it a credible footprint so mm -hmm. that as um, these banks or lending institutions are, you know, their systems are searching you. Because like you said, yeah. it's not like this one-on-one -on -one underwriting anymore. It's very much like fill out an application. If you check, you know, this many boxes, then you are fundable. Yeah. And so it's more about understanding what boxes to you know check, what data to have uh, put into this kind of digital footprint yeah. 
um, to prepare for that. Exactly. We've got um, what we help our clients do in our Get Fundable program is help them become approval ready. Mm -hmm. So making sure that they, whether you have a 700 credit score, 800 personal credit mm -hmm. score, no matter what your personal profile looks like, you are approval ready. You know, We know that when you go to the lenders, you're checking all of those boxes and they're going to say yes. Yeah to some degree will give you money. Sure, yeah, that's great. And and how, uh, give us like a little bit of case study, how, how probable is it if a business is set up correctly, you know, what are some of the things you've seen, how probable is it that they could actually go get uh, bank lending? So in the last year, our two top banks, um, we have a 100% success rate with our clients going and getting wow. funding with them. I was actually just on the phone with our um, bank representative that would speak with at one of them and he had six hours of meetings in the day and besides mine he had said four of those six were with clients that we had sent him hmm. um, so we are very confident when we help you set up your entity and make sure your personal is in line and ready for funding you're going to get approved got it and and that timeline for that is it take six months, a year, two years, how long? I mean, I assume it takes a little bit of a, a process. Time. Yeah, That's actually a great question because that's one of the things we've seen tightening up. Um, with our one lending relationship, In up until July, it was three months of having a relationship mm -hmm. with this bank before you could start um, applying for funding, but they've just increased it to four months. Mm -hmm. So while it's not a big difference, four ver months versus three months, it sure. is a place where the lender is wanting to have a little bit longer of a relationship, see how much longer you um, have traffic, deposits, putting money into their bank. A lot of um, industries, especially like in the real estate space, we uh, everything that's adjacent to real estate, like. Um, construction and things like that. Mm -hmm. I've heard so much from construction companies, you know, because their capital's up and down, uh, the receivables are in and out, um, that I've heard a lot of them just say, I, it's just impossible for yeah. me. Is it possible for them to actually architect this in a way that a construction company could actually get help from a bank? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why our main focus is with real estate investors, um, rehabbers, uh, flippers, buy and hold, whatever it is, because we see that their income is really high one month mm -hmm. and nothing for two months. It's all over the place. So in our education, we teach you how to build a fundable entity where it is a lot more steady. Mm -hmm. um, whether you have uh, income coming in from two LLCs, one LLC, if you've got your W-2 job that you're still working on the side, mm -hmm. any source of revenue that you have coming in, we create a flat line so that it's more um, predictable to the banks. Predictable and you know succinct, Stable. right? Like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so uh, for somebody that's out there um, and they're like, man, I've really struggled to get bank lending. I can't get lines of credit. I can't get you know anything yeah. like that. Even struggle to get credit cards. Um, you know, how do they reach out to you? I know you guys have an upcoming event that mm -hmm. I, I would highly recommend if you can, you know, get yeah. out or get to their virtual uh, conference. I think it'd be helpful. Would you mind just kind of walking us through that? Yeah, so we've got on September 26th and 27th, it's a two day virtual summit and bring a notepad and pencil, <laughs> sit at your computer, have your water filled because it is a fire hose of information. Um, you will walk away after the summit with actionable steps on how to set up your fundable entity, mm -hmm. how to build relationships with lenders and how to go get funding. Um, so you can go to businessfundingsummit.com um, and purchase a ticket to our two day summit. That's awesome. Yeah, I highly, highly recommend it because I think that some of them have been burnt out because they've been going to their bank directly and they, a lot of times they've had this bank for 20 years yeah. and no matter how hard they try, no matter what, you know, it used to be very relational and it's just not mm -hmm. anymore. It used to be if I knew the president of the bank, I'm going to get a loan, you know, yes. it's just not that way anymore. Um, and even my family is involved in banking and loan committee used to be a different process. There's mm -hmm. really not a loan committee like it used to be, yeah. right? Like you're not just sitting there going like, yes, yes, no, no, no. Uh, it's, it's very driven off of, um, you know, kind of a, a, a back-end system of software that's, you know, combing through the records like yeah. you're talking about and verifying if what they say is real. Um, so I would highly recommend it. Um, I've seen uh, some of the people that I've passed over to you guys uh, find success, which yeah. has been great. 
Um, especially when you see somebody who's like, I just, I'm not fundable. I, I, I'm never gonna get it. Yeah. And then they find a path, like, and it's so helpful for their growth. We hear that all the time. And to your point of it's not um, having a relationship with the president of the bank, mm -hmm. we had a client in North Carolina who was in that situation. He's from a smaller town, did know the president of the bank, had been banking there and doing his business banking for 10 plus years and just wasn't getting the funding. Mm -hmm. um, but within three months of implementing our stuff, having those borrow behaviors that the computer is looking at, mm -hmm. not that the president of the bank is looking sure. at, he got funding. And from that same bank. Yes. <laughs> that's funny. And yeah. he was like, I've, I've known you for years, yeah. and, but that's not what they're looking at. They don't right. care if you are the nicest person right. on your block. Yeah. They want to see how you do business. To your point too, it's like, it's not about owning the corner store. I have a bank in Georgia that I've been struggling to get funding from even though I've put millions, yeah. maybe hundreds of millions through this bank, right? Like, and still struggle because if you don't, if you don't check those boxes, mm -hmm. Marilyn talk about it all the time, it's like, if you don't check those boxes, it doesn't matter, right? Like, he doesn't have the authority, you know, yeah. to essentially sign off and go, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a, a line of credit. So yeah. that's really, really great. I love the service you guys provide. Um, I really don't know of anybody else in the space that does it like you do and how you do it with a success record. And so personal endorsement for me, I <laughs> ha have always been a big fan and, uh, and know that you guys can really help some people out. So I appreciate what you guys do. Um, so one more time, uh, tell them how to find just like your general website if they wanna look at you and then obviously would love to have them go to the virtual conference. Yeah, you can find us on getfundable.com. Um, you can purchase the new F word on getfundable.com and you can also go to businessfundingsummit.com to purchase a ticket to our two-day virtual summit September 26th and 27th. Very cool. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast Thanks, and uh, appreciate you guys always supporting Think Realty. Yeah. One last quick thank you to our podcast sponsor, uh, which is CB3 Financial Services. When you're taking on a new real estate investment project, have a trusted lender is key. Uh, count on CB3 for your fix and flip, rental cash out, or re a rate and term refi needs. CB3financial.com forward slash Think Realty. CB3financial.com forward slash Think Realty. If you haven't joined our Think Realty Plus program, uh, we uh, have a great program that we built. It's $14.99 a month. That's the most expensive thing we have at Think Realty, and that gets you access to our magazine, access to our conferences, access to our resident experts, access to our uh, monthly calls with resident experts, uh, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. If you use the code LAUNCH uh, at thinkrealty.com, it'll get you a special there, and uh, please use that code and join us at Think Realty Plus. We will talk to you next time. Thanks, as always, for joining the podcast. Thank you.